Returning to the protagonist who is with Madame Ju in the ladies' garden, Do he remembers what the stalker had told her and asks Madame Ju if she is hiding anything, but as the lady denies it, the protagonist decides to trust her. Then Madame Ju's nephew appears to show her the company reports and, as Do he is leaving soon, the man says he'll take the protagonist for a ride. Before they leave, Madame Ju suggests that they get married, as they both love working and have always been the best off members of the family, but Do he comments that this would be very strange. In the car, it's Sukun who takes the wheel, but only for a short time, as he breaks the vehicle abruptly when he hears that the protagonist has been on a blind date, which has resulted in the secretary hitting her face and her nose starting to bleed, so she takes the wheel to get them safely to their destination, while the cousins giggle in the back seats. Cutting to Guwan who is trying to find something about the transfer of his tattoo in the demon manual, but unfortunately there's nothing there about it. All is not lost, however, as her butler arrives with research on Do He and we discover that she doesn't come from a wealthy family, her father was one of the founders of Myri Electronics which is the parent company of the group along with the president and her mother was a hairdresser who also ran a beauty salon. 17 years ago, the protagonist lost her parents in a car accident when she was just 11 years old. It was Madame Ju who took her in and looked after her until then. Although she had dated a few people, Do He always ended her relationships because she didn't have time for them, as her studies and work were everything to her. Returning to the protagonist, she finally manages to meet up with Suan and to sum up their conversation, Do He shows the woman that she also has things she can use against her if she wants to, in the same way that Suan went after her company and makes it clear that she doesn't want to start a war against the protagonist. In the next scene we see Madame Ju in the church confessional, she's talking about fearing something, more than going to hell and being afraid that she, here the lady doesn't say the person's name, won't forgive her. We then see a short scene involving an accident that Madame Ju suffered, a car seems to have exploded and with the impact she acquired knee problems, which is why she still uses a cane today, in this memory there is also a cell phone with a broken screen, receiving a call from Do He. Meanwhile, Gu Wan's butler ends up letting it slip to star Jean that their boss is without his powers. And speaking of the demon, he went to meet Do He to see if he could get his powers back. The protagonist even tried to pay him back for the disastrous lunch they had the other day, but the man just asked her to go somewhere with him. Gu Wan took her to the contracts he hadn't been able to finalize earlier and with her powers back, it was easy, then they went to a parking lot for couples in love to do that and he said he wanted to test something with her. Gu Wan guides her out of the vehicle and they stop in front of a river, then the man asks her if she can hold her breath and at that moment, the protagonist thought he was going to kiss her, but Gu Wan makes them both fall into the water and at the bottom, he tries to do everything he can to get the tattoo to come back to him, but nothing works. This only makes Do He very angry and she starts to fight with him, as this is the second attempt on her life in less than 48 hours, and the woman is exhausted and starts to panic. After calming down, she goes to Gu Wan's vehicle to get her purse and hand over the money he hadn't accepted so that there are no more disputes between them, and the protagonist goes on her way. In the next scene we see that the stalker has put the belongings of the chief financial officer he had attacked in a package and left it in a cupboard, then someone else has picked up the same package and when he gets on the chief financial officer's phone, he discovers that the last person the man had called was Doohee, and we can also see that the person who picked up the package last has a lighter in his hand. Now we see several small scenes, in one of which a man with scarred skin appears at the reception of a mental health clinic, scratching himself a lot and looking mentally unwell. Another is Suan freaking out on the phone, asking someone to publish an article and that she'll pay a lot of money for it, then promising to end Doohee's life. The next person to appear is the protagonist crossing the street and stops when she reads the news on the big screen that the head of finance who had called her has been found dead, after which a motorcycle approaches Doohee at high speed and tries to throw a liquid at her, but luckily Gu Wan appears at that moment and protects her, so that he is the one who is hit. 
The man's clothes begin to dissolve and his skin will soon be burnt if the sulfuric acid hits it, but at that moment the man uses his powers by holding the protagonist's wrist and that's when she realizes that he's no ordinary man, so Gu Wan says he's a demon, which for us would be the devil. Later, they go to the police station, where the detective asks do he questions about whether she has someone who is trying to take her life, and although 90% of the people around her are suspicious, the woman says no. Meanwhile, Gu Wan waits outside the interrogation room and comes across a woman who lives on the streets who has been taken to the police station. This person comes up to him and says that the man is ephemeral at the moment, but that he will soon lose his life and it will be a terrible event. However, Gu Wan didn't pay much attention to the woman's words and left the place feeling contempt for her. When the man is in the car with the protagonist, she can kind of understand what he is and what he does, so she decides to use this to her advantage. Since Gu Wan needs her to use her powers and do his life is on the line, he can stay by her side at all times and they can pretend that the man is her bodyguard, but the demon won't accept it, for him it's an offense to use his powers to protect a mere human, so there's not much the protagonist can do. But it's a good thing that Gu Wan took her home, because the stalker was waiting for the woman in the parking lot and only didn't act because the man was with him, which results in him freaking out in his hiding place because his attempts are always failing. Alone at home, Do He even sends messages to Gu Wan saying that she'll turn his tattoo into a piggy if he doesn't agree to be her bodyguard, but this doesn't have the effect she was hoping for. Then the protagonist sees the report about the chief financial officer and decides to call Madame Ju to find out if everything is all right at the company. The woman even comments on the call she had received from the man and the lady hangs up after saying that nothing is happening to Do He. But back at home, Madame Ju asks her secretary for a financial summary of the parent company and its subsidiaries, along with the story about the chief financial officer, and spends the night investigating the documents. As the day begins to dawn, the lady says that she can't believe she hasn't noticed something going on, and we viewers suffer through the mystery. In the next scene we see that Gu Wan's body has started to spontaneously combust, so the man forces himself to go and meet the protagonist and accept her offer to be his bodyguard, so that he can use his powers to close more contracts and stop the combustion process. So the man goes for his first contract with Du He by his side, he makes the proposal to the mother who has a daughter with very severe cancer, that he will save her if the woman goes to hell in 10 years time and to help her girl, the mother says she accepts going to much worse places, so she ends up accepting. After they leave the hospital, Gu Wan talks about his habit of always eating sweets after signing a contract and the protagonist begins to express the contempt she feels for his attitude of using the misfortune of others to his advantage, which really makes him a demon, Do he explains to him that the little girl he saved will probably feel guilty if she finds out what her mother did to save her. But Gu Wan doesn't care about that and as the protagonist doesn't agree with his means of staying alive, she says she won't use him as a bodyguard anymore. Meanwhile, Madame Ju receives a person at her house, whose face we can't see, and the woman tells him that as well as doing a dirty job, he has taken the life of another human being, so he should pay for his sins. Returning to Gu Wan, he was thinking about what the protagonist had said about the girl feeling guilty if she found out, so he decided to go back to the hospital and ask her what her wish was. The girl's answer was that her parents would no longer suffer because of her, and after that, something began to change inside the demon. The protagonist also ends up meeting her family again in a restaurant, they went there to celebrate the little girl's 10th birthday and the whole situation moved do he. Later, when the protagonist is back at the company, she gets out of the car and meets Gu Wan and we discover that he has been rehired as a bodyguard. Later we see the two of them together and Do He asks the man questions to find out how he became a demon, then we learn that he was once a human, 200 years ago, but Gu Wan doesn't carry the memory of that time. The book, which is a manual on demons, says that God needed someone to work in hell and for this a human was chosen, which in this case was Gu Wan. The conversation is interrupted when the protagonist receives a message from Madame Ju, who says that it's over for her and that she loves Do He. These words make the woman worried and the feeling increases when the lady doesn't answer her cell phone. 
So the two of them go to Madame Ju's house, where she is found in her garden and appears to be unconscious. The protagonist tries to get the lady to wake up, but she doesn't succeed and this begins to make Doohy desperate. The next day, Madame Ju's wake takes place and the ceremony reminds the protagonist of when her parents died. The 11-year-old Doohy didn't want to cry and blamed herself for their accident, because she wanted them to come and celebrate their anniversary with her. So when Madame Ju first appeared in the protagonist's life, she still didn't have this love for her, but on that day, she helped the girl understand that she should put her feelings out there and cry over her parents' death, which wasn't her fault. Returning to Doohy, the war against her began as soon as Madame Ju was no longer with us and everyone in the blood family began to make it clear how much they didn't want her among them, except Sukun. At one point, after seeing everyone enjoying themselves on that sad day, the protagonist decided that she couldn't go on there any longer, so she headed for the garden that had been a place of refuge for Madame Ju. Meanwhile, the man who is chasing her is also there, but in this situation Doohy doesn't realize it. The protagonist's peace in the garden is interrupted when Suk Min's son enters the place to smoke and Doohy warns him that Madame Ju wouldn't like him to infest her flowers with the smoke he would produce, but Do Jiang replies that his grandmother has died and now everything will belong to his father, so he can do whatever he wants, even replace the old lady smell that she left behind. But our protagonist won't lie down for this spoiled man, she insists that Madame Ju wouldn't like it and he takes her off guard when she replies that today is a good day, after which Do He takes the cigarette out of Do Jiang's mouth and says that he won't let him do it. The man didn't seem to have a problem doing something to the protagonist, but before he could think of anything, Gu Wan approached the two and the spoiled man left. Gu Wan and Do He share a good wine after which the protagonist begins to talk to him about Madame Ju. She tells him that the lady used to go to the greenhouse because it protected her from the cruelty she herself committed and that Madame Ju knew that her children would be happy with her gone, which is why she was always grumpy with them and kept to herself. Do he wanted to have the opportunity to say goodbye and Gu Wan grants her this little wish, because according to the man, we were black at funerals so that the spirit of the deceased doesn't recognize the loved ones and goes into the light, but to give the protagonist some peace, he changes the color of her clothes to white and leaves her alone, and not long afterwards, a butterfly appears and lands on the protagonist's finger. Later, we see that the detective has gathered everyone together to tell them that Madame Ju used a painkiller that she was allergic to, so he asks her if she suddenly didn't have any enemies who could have changed her medication, since the label on the bottle said another drug, but the only people who knew about the danger of the medication if she took it were those in the room and her doctor, which makes them suspects. Despite this, the lady's legitimate children decide that they will not divulge the true cause of their mother's death to the press and this begins to disturb Doohy, as the protagonist begins to connect the dots that the audit would have been dismissed earlier, the death of the chief financial officer and that whoever did this to Madame Ju didn't want anything to be investigated, somehow everything was connected, Doohy just didn't know the reason yet. The protagonist takes the decision to announce in front of everyone that Madame Ju has been the victim of a crime, which makes her even more hated by the lady's children and the eldest son, Suk Min, orders security to take Do He out of the place. However, the lawyer who was about to read the will said that one of the conditions for announcing what was written was that the protagonist be present, so Do He remained. And what the man read shocked everyone, but especially Madame Ju's children, because she left everything, including the presidency of the company, to the protagonist, but there was one condition, she would have a year to get married, otherwise the rights would pass to Suk Min. As the lady already knew the uproar this would cause, she left a written letter for each of her heirs explaining her reasons. The protagonist then begins to be pressured not to marry by those who have always treated her badly, so in response she says that the only way to stop her is to take her own life. Deciding to put an end to the war that has only just begun, Do He takes one of the rings she carries on her fingers and offers it to Gu Wan, asking him to marry her. What did you think of these episodes? I hope you enjoyed the summary, leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe. If you liked the video, like it and share it to help me, until next time.